My name is Stu Ellis, and we're standing in South Central Idaho. This is a sugar beet field of Lake Matthews. Phenomenal sugar beets, very large, a lot of recoverable sugar in a beet field like this. And that's what it gets paid for. You look out of this field, you've got vegetation not being eaten up by fungus, no blights, no insects out here. Tremendous vegetation that is putting more sugar, putting beets together like this. What's the secret of all of this? Well, Blake is working with Rocky Mountain Agronomics, and you're going to meet uh, Jared Cook in just a moment. They're working with Texas Plant and Soil Lab, and you'll meet Noel Garcia, and you're going to listen to Blake Matthews. He's going to tell you what has been happening in his beet field, a program of nutrition that not many other farmers are using, and certainly not getting the type of production that he's getting from this field. We haven't changed anything. The, the, the crop was maintaining at that, and we there wasn't any progression and so we we looked around for for places that were saying hey you know we can help you we can uh, we can increase your tonnage we can increase the sugar and we've tried a few different things and, and we finally found something that works I think and what what how would you characterize that what what works what sort of a program have you applied here well we've just paid a lot more attention to nutrition rather than just chasing the nitrogen we've uh, with uh, with Noli's recommendations they've been a lot uh, They've kind of made us open our eyes, I guess, on what we've been lacking in that uh, some of the other labs have said that we were all right in. And uh, pursuing that and following those recommendations, it, it's made a big difference. You've got some, uh, some the, the foliage here is just extraordinary. And I'm assuming nitrogen caused that, but uh, we don't see anything, uh, uh, any problems in the field. It's, it's, you can't find any fungus, can't find any insecticide, or can't find any insects. Uh, have you been applying a lot of fungicides and a lot of insecticides? No, we we actually haven't. We've we've applied one fungicide and, and zero insecticides this year, which has been a great cost savings. But I think it's attributed to, to just the overall plant health that uh, the plants have never been healthier, and I think that's because the nutrition is is where it needs to be. Uh, you said you were in the uh, production had been in the 30s, uh, fairly steady. Um, since you've applied the program. Uh, uh, what have you seen production go to? What do you estimate this field at this year? Well, this is the first year that we've really followed the program all the way and to a T, and so um, we're very encouraged by how it looks, and, and we're kind of excited for harvest to get here to see to see where we end up. Now, have you pulled some beets and made any estimates on on tonnage at all, or had any anybody come in and say, "Gee, looks like you've got so big of a crop." Yeah, I mean, we've had a few people in here looking at it, and we've weighed beets and, and took stand counts and that, and right now, you know, for the first part of August, we're, we figured we're in the mid-30s right now, and we've still got another two months before we, we've got a harvest. So. so that would raise it, what, above 40 somewhere? Hopefully, yeah, hopefully the low 40s, mid-40s. Okay, what about sugar content? We haven't talked about that. Where had you been in the past, and where do you think something like this would be? Um, typically, we've been in the mid-17s. Um, we've had a few fields here and there that have gone a little bit higher. Um, we tried a little bit of their stuff towards the end of last year and it seemed to help on a couple fields and so um, you know we're hoping this year we're going to be in the in the high 19s maybe even 20s. We'll we'll see what happens. Okay. What have I not asked about that you think is important? Um, you know I think the biggest thing is just the attention to detail that, that Noli takes within the samples and within his uh, recommendations I mean it's it's very detailed and it's very easy to follow and I think it's, it's made a huge difference okay what are you any, looking for change next year in anything incorporating anything new um, I think we're gonna start spreading it to a couple of our uh, other crops um, for next year with with the, the success we've seen here you know the harvest is gonna be the the uh, final deal to see whether it did or didn't do what we were thinking but uh, yeah, I think it's gonna. We're gonna put it over more acres this next year. Blake Matthews praised the work of Noel or Noe Garcia of the Texas Plant and Soil Lab, who provided the technical recommendations to Jared Cook of Rocky Mountain Agronomics. Um, rather than speaking specifically about products, uh, I'm gonna say we 
we've applied the Texas Plant and Soil Lab program. Uh, we've, we've, we've intensified our management on this crop behind us. We've pulled uh, aggressive soil samples, both one foot, two foot samples. And then we've been pedial sampling every two weeks, all season long. Um, and then according to that pedial analysis, we've been fertilizing accordingly. Uh, and th that's been our program. That's, that's been our true product. What sort of problems were was this area facing that caused you to go in that direction? Um, I don't know about necessary problems. You know, uh, perhaps a few challenges, just pest. You know, we, we deal with a lot of leaf miner uh, early on root aphid, a few challenges that way. But the biggest trend was just the nutritional management of the sugar beet crop. Uh, always before, we we felt like there was always a little bit more that we could capture. Just didn't know how to get it. Um, and that's where I'd say the, the lab with Texas Plant and Soil Lab has, has helped us get to that next level. Okay. Soil tests, petiole tests, and that's the process that, that you would start uh, with, in cooperation with the, uh, the farm owner uh, to get it going. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. One of the folks who stopped by Blake Matthews Field was Dave Bateman of Germain's Seed Technology. He's the sugar beet market manager for that company which sells a competing brand of seed to what is growing in Blake Matthews Field. And Dave provided his expert analysis of the field, which is benefiting from the agronomic recommendations of the Texas Plant and Soil Lab. Well, lots of times late season, we've, we, you start getting uh, fungal diseases on, on the plants. And this field is, is clean of, of fungal disease and it, it looks really good. Now, this is a Roundup ready crop. There's okay. been some uh, weed control here with, with Roundup. Uh, with, with no fungal disease, and you've already made the point to, uh, in conversation that there's no insects out here. Uh, what, how, do you, how do you reconcile the fact that there's no fungus, no insects in a crop like this? Well, I think it's that's what the crop advisors managing this field have done nutritionally to, to take care of, of the plant so that they're healthy, they're not weak, Part of nature is, is they destroys the weakest. If there's something that's not right in nature, nature will seek to destroy it to replace it. And and these, these plants are healthy, so there's nothing here to try and to, to destroy or replace these plants. Okay, so if they were low on something, whether that's boron or manganese or whatever it might be. Any deficiency, yeah. Any deficiency, then that weakens the plant. You Correct. See. And, and in, in this case, where the plants are about as strong, at least visibly here as we can see, yep. you're saying that there's really good nutritional balance. Yes, whatever, what uh, Jared Cook is the agronomist on this field, what he's done on this field is a wonderful job of using Texas Plant Soil Labs to balance nutritionally these plants so that they, they can, they're grown perfectly. We got two months to harvest. This is going to be a phenomenal crop and it's, it's going to be fun to watch them harvest it. All right. Well, as we wrap up in Blake Matthews sugar beet field and we look at all the sugar beets that, that he's got out here, You've heard why his beet production is so great. Tons per acre, well, right now in the upper 30 tons per acre, probably by harvest time it could be well into the 40s. And sugar, uh, sugar probably in the upper teens someplace, which a lot of folks would really like to have. And you've heard exactly why he's getting all of that production in this field. Just a phenomenal beet field that you'd like to have on your farm as well. I'm Stu Ellis.